We're going to take a look and a listen to the brand new Atlas N-Scale GP38-2 with Loke Sound Decoder on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I recently purchased one of the newly released Atlas Gold Series N-Scale GP38-2 locomotives with the ESU Loke Sound Decoder factory equipped. I'm very excited to take a look and a listen at this locomotive to see how it runs and how it sounds. N-Scalers especially have really enjoyed the quality of Atlas locomotives for a very long time. And I know this is going to be a great leap forward as they begin to add quality sound and these excellent decoders for motor control as well coming out from ESU. So today we're going to go over to the workbench, take a look at this as it comes out of the box. I'm also going to compare it to an older GP38 that Atlas uh, had uh, produced in the past. And then we're gonna bring it out to the layout to see how it operates, listen to how it sounds. So let's head on over to the workbench and take a look. Take a moment to check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. They have a great line of model railroad equipment and supplies and some of the best customer service around. Their website has a real-time inventory system, they offer some of the best prices in model railroading, and they ship in one business day. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. What I have here is Atlas's uh, N-Scale Masterline Gold Series uh, GP38-2 decorated for BNSF in the H1 paint scheme. Uh, now, I say all that because uh, we're going to unbox this, but I, and I'm going to show you uh, a little uh, comparison to a previous GP38 produced by Atlas a few years ago. Uh, but I want you to know that this is a series that was kind of mixed up in the whole uh, China factory closure a couple of years ago. And so this was announced uh, about two years ago. And in fact, I had originally reserved one when it was first announced. Then, of course, they had that whole factory debacle. And so it was delayed for a very long time. And this particular uh, series, this particular line has just come out in the last few weeks. So uh, I know that the lights give a little glare on these jewel case cases. So let's get this open. But you see, of course, it's packaged in, in a jewel case as is kind of standard for uh, in-scale equipment these days. Uh, and the inside, you know, got the nice bubble wrap. It's nicely packaged. Um, and we're going to lift it right out of the box. And of course they always, uh, at least on the top, put these little pieces of foam anymore to kind of help protect the handrails from getting bent and damaged, uh, during shipping. And we'll pry that right out. And there is our, our locomotive. Now, again, this is the, the, uh, uh, Masterline Gold Series. So these are some of the most detailed locomotives that Atlas produces in in scale, and uh, very very nice detail that, that we see on these. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over all the the details of that. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to bring in another locomotive that I have that I've actually had for several years, um, and this is a, a uh, the, the same line of locomotive. This is the GP38. Uh, what, what I want you to notice, and I hope this isn't too disappointing uh, for, for, for you, is that these two, the detail on these two locomotives are, are almost identical. Of course, there are some differences because the new one is a GP38-2, and the older one that I have here is a GP38, and so there are some, some slight body differences between the two. Um, but the detail on them is, is, is almost identical. A couple of things that I will point out, and I don't know how well you can see this, but, uh, but, but, but this door on, the, on, this, on this housing here, which is a filter housing, uh, now on the older one, that is just a flat panel. This one does, uh, the newer one does show the, the, the kind of fold marks that they put for, uh, for rigidity on those panels, uh, which is a nice detail that I noticed right offhand. Uh, you'll also notice a slight difference in the, in the, the paint schemes, they're slightly different from one another, uh, and the colors are, are slightly different. The, the older one has a, a slightly darker burnt orange, the newer one has a little brighter burnt orange, the older one has a darker, uh, the, the, the forest green, 
and the newer one slightly lighter. Also, you'll notice a difference in the striping along the side of the nose here on the older one, and on the newer one, that yellow stripe is actually on the top of the nose. Um, so, and again, these are just, these are details that, that are different because of the different prototypes. Uh, one thing that I, I do notice that I actually like a little better about the old one as opposed to the new one is as is customary up on the front this one actually says that this is a gp38 uh, with of course the f mark for the front of the locomotive uh, the newer one has the f for the front of the locomotive but does not designate it as a gp38-2 so uh, a little bit of something there that i actually preferred about about the old one uh, but as again as you look at the details i'll turn up look at the roof and i'm going to show you some stills here also so you can kind of see uh, up close uh, better than you can here on video some of the differences the top we, we we still have great detail on on both of these now the detail might stand out just a little more on the newer one but but in both of them uh, you have these kind of see-through radiators uh, grills, and you can actually see the fan blades down inside of the radiators. That's true on both of these. The horn details, the, the, the lift rings, uh, which are not actually rings, they're, they're, they're plastic, they're molded on, uh, but for in scale, they, they have a very realistic look. Again, those are, are, are both very good on both locomotives. Uh, I'm going to turn it over this way. Uh, one of the distinctive differences between a... Uh, a GP38 and a GP38-2. The GP38-2 has this sight glass uh, near in the rear uh, portion of the, the long hood that the GP38 doesn't have, and that is a, a, a prototypical uh, a distinction. But again, the, the, the two bodies are very, very similar to one another. And, and the thing that you'll notice if you look closely, if you turn this all the way upside down, both of these uh, are marked on the bottom as uh, Atlas, um, and made in China, and they are both marked as being designed uh, in 1996. So these are actually 24-year-old body designs, uh, and this is just a new, um, a, 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 a new run, a new release of those. Uh, now I'm going to show you one other thing about these, though, that, that makes them a greater difference. Uh, while there are so many similarities between the, the body on the outside, there are some differences between them on the inside. Uh, I'm going to take the shell off of the older one here, and you'll see here your common uh, split frame design that you become very familiar with in N-Scale. With, of course, uh, this is actually a factory installed lens decoder. Uh, from back oh, nearly nearly 20 years ago. This locomotive has been around a long time. Uh, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, uh, the, 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 the factory lens decoders were economy decoders, and I was never impressed with them. I have a couple of these locomotives that came factory uh, with factory lens decoders, and uh, they they lack the ability to use speed tables. They lack a, a mid-voltage level, and they're just very, very basic lights motor kind of kind of decoders but with the lens decoder again you see what we've become used to for so long as a very standard uh, type of split frame design and it's even marked right here on the side as, as a 1997 design uh, for the frame the new locomotive that i'm going to show you i'm showing you today uh, has a slightly newer design on the inside as i pull the shell off here and you see, I mean, it's still a split frame design, uh, but you can tell there's a very different look to this uh, particular locomotive. And this one has been uh, milled to work with uh, the uh, ESU decoders. And in fact, in this particular one, I have an ESU with a Loke sound uh, decoder. So I'm excited about uh, getting this out on the layout and listening to it. This was an, an excellent looking, excellent designed locomotive back when it was designed, you know, way back in 1996, 24, 24 years ago. It was uh, the top of the mark at the time. Uh, still producing uh, the same basic shell, uh, the same basic details. I, I wouldn't call it top of the mark today, but it's still a very nicely detailed locomotive. And if you're one who is looking for uh, kind of a balance between good detail, good looking locomotives, but something that's durable for operation, this is an excellent choice for you. Uh, the biggest difference between these is the, the slight change in the design of the frame uh, to allow them to use the ESU decoder. And then, of course, the ESU decoders, which I already know, are far superior to the old lens decoders, uh, even if you get them without sound. And, of course, with sound, you have that, uh, have that extra advantage. 
So, having taken a look at uh, some of the basics of, of the locomotive, I'm going to put the shells back on these, and then I'm going to take uh, this new GP38-2 out to the layout, and we're going to see how it runs, give it a listen, and, uh, and see what you think. And here's our GP38-2 on the layout, and you can see uh, you know, on the tracks, under the lights, uh, colors are vibrant, looks fantastic. But more importantly, we want to see how this runs and we want to hear how this low sound decoder sounds. So let's start off by uh, getting the engine started up and uh, give a listen to the, some of the sounds. There's some of the basic sounds of the decoder, and uh, now let's just take a look at, uh, at, at, at how it runs at slow speed. We're going to start off in the forward direction with speed step one, and you see very nice, smooth, slow speed operation. Here's speed step two, and you'll hear the engine rev up at speed step three. As we come back into the frame, I'm going to get it up to speed step five so you can hear uh, the next notch in the, in the motor sounds. Three, and yeah, here's speed step five. Now you'll notice I've got just a little bit of uh, delay programmed into both the acceleration and the deceleration. One thing to be aware of with these low sound decoders, every one that I have gotten, uh, whether it's in the scale trains or in this Atlas, is programmed with a lot of momentum built in. Uh, and uh, in fact, I think this one, the default was a set of 80. Uh, I toned that way back. I like a little bit of uh, momentum. Uh, I got these set at about 20. So I'll get a little bit of momentum, but, uh, but not as much as what they have uh, programmed in from the factory. Now, I've tested this a little bit, and I can tell you that this locomotive will, by itself, solo, comfortably pull uh, at least a dozen cars on a level grade. And uh, in fact, we're going to back it up now, and uh, we're going to couple up to a cut of a dozen tank cars and show you how it pulls on a level grade.
Well, even though there's not been a lot of changes to the detail of the shell of these locomotives over the past several years, they are still fantastic looking locomotives. And again, a great balance between nicely detailed locomotives that are still durable for operation and for handling. So if that fits the bill of what you need for your layout, I would highly recommend these. These ESU Loke Sound decoders run smoothly and sound fantastic, and they run the best of any sound decoder and in scale that I have ever used. So I recommend giving them a try. But be sure and check out the description down below where you're going to find a link to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, and many other great links that I know you'll enjoy and benefit from. Also, if you'd like to get more out of Ron's Trains and Things, think about a channel membership. Click the join button down below to get all the information that you need. If you'd like more Model Railroad content right now, check out the videos linked on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?